Yes, welcome everyone. It's good to see more people joining here. We have people joining from a variety of states and it's really good to have you all here. Um, we'll begin um, with Stephen in just a little bit. So hang tight while more people join us. It's really good to be here. Um, Matthew and thank you and Lucas for all your hard work and your behind the scenes things that you've done. Uh, I really appreciate uh, what you've done for all of the, all of us teachers and I think it's it's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. When one event after another gets canceled, uh, after a while you just uh, I, I myself felt like I really needed some motivation, some inspiration for getting back into the classroom, getting into the, the teaching spirit again. So I just, I really appreciate everything that Faith Builders is doing and uh, everything that you guys do that's behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, it really has been, um, it's been disappointing to us here at Faith Builders to need to cancel Teacher's Week. Um, and clearly the, the guidance from the state wouldn't allow us to hold that this August, but it was disappointing to cancel it. And yeah. so we're grateful, Stephen, that you're willing to, to join us here for these sessions. And, and our hope is that it can be, uh, this can be an inspiration for teachers. Um, this certainly in in my memory this is a year that will bring challenges that we've never faced um, and i know people talk about the the flu epidemics of the past um, you know, i've heard melvin layman talk about them i think the last one he mentioned happened in 1968 and uh, that predates most of us that are here today and so yeah uh, we, we don't really have this kind of experience in our, in our history, in our own personal lives. So it's challenging. And uh, it is our hope that this will encourage and inspire people. Um, and for those of you who, who haven't met Stephen, uh, Stephen and his family uh, spent 16 years in Guatemala and Stephen was involved in education there uh, as a teacher and as a school administrator. Uh, now they live in Ontario and Stephen teaches grades seven and eight at the Donegal Community School. And so he brings a lot of experience as a teacher, uh, a lot of heart for teaching. Um, and as Stephen talks to us here, I, I think we'll be encouraged. I'm expecting a a blessing and encouragement from his perspective, his insights, and from the Word of God. Uh, this this title, this theme, comes from the Lord speaking to His people, and so I, I hope and believe that the Lord will speak to us today. Uh, Stephen, before I turn it over to you, I'd like to lead in a short prayer. So let's pray. Yeah. Lord, uh, thank you for this opportunity to join together as men and women who care about schools and about the students, the children, the young people who will be in our classrooms this year. And Father, we pray that, that as we uh, come together, as we listen to Stephen speaking, that we will be encouraged, that we'll be equ equipped for the work ahead of us Yes. Um, open our hearts to see the work that you are doing and want to do. I pray that you'll bless Stephen as he uh, speaks in this context that's um, so different from what we're used to. And I pray that this will be a blessing to those here today and those who uh, watch this in the future. So we commit it to you uh, for your for your glory and the good of your people in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, Stephen. Matthew, can I just interrupt to say that, uh, did you want to say anything about the chat? Yes, I did. Um, those of you who are here, if you want to, uh, if you have any kind of technical issues here, 
Uh, put a note in the chat. Lucas is monitoring the chat. And so if there's any technical issues that you run into as we go along, he can, if you put those in the chat box then we can address that. Um, and, and there may be opportunity to, to interact there at the end as well. But especially if you see any technical issues along the way, please let us know in the chat box. Thanks, Lucas. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining uh, this little talk taken from Zechariah 4, verse 6, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You know, Zechariah was called of the Lord to minister at a very difficult time. He had been given a big assignment. For dozens of years or more, the task of rebuilding the temple had stood half completed. Zechariah was commissioned by God to encourage the people, not scold them, but to encourage them to complete their unfinished responsibility. This really struck a chord with me since I teach grade seven and eight. And in my class, I have students that have much the same attitude as the Jews did in the time of Zechariah. They think it's too hard. <laughs> they ask the question, what's the point? Why do we have to learn this? They have lost the vision and, and their focus. For some of them, it's their last year in grade eight. Uh, hard to believe. I know you too have been called in at a very difficult time. Like Zachariah, you have a big assignment. Maybe you haven't thought about it. Maybe this is just another school year for you. Something you need to plan, uh, organize, and power through. Or maybe the people around you don't seem to understand the importance of what you do. My wife sometimes babysits a little fellow. He's three or four years old. And during the past school year, he was at our place. And he asked Brenda, he, a he asked a host of questions. But one of the questions he asked was, where's Stephen? And Brenda said, oh, he's at school. He said, oh, doesn't, doesn't he work? Maybe you encounter some of that as well. I'd like to uh, share a few thoughts with you this morning about our work as teachers in Christian schools. What is our assignment? What is our work? What is our mission? Our work is a very important work. It's a high calling. Have you ever thought how important your work is? Your job is to train and educate young lives. You get to be part of preparing them for the future. In my life, I have poured concrete and worked with cement. And it is important that you prepare before you get to the pouring the cement part. And my screen it's just not changing here maybe it will here in a little bit before you get to the pouring the cement part you need to have the rebar in place and wired together the forms need to be placed precisely and stand up to the pressure of the wet cement without moving or breaking apart preparation is an essential part of teaching I'm thankful for the people at Faith Builders, people like uh, Matthew and Lucas, who work hard behind the scenes to make an event like this possible. I'm thankful to God for his grace and his power uh, that he supplies. I'm thankful for good, solid Christian curriculum that saves me hours of work every week. I'm thankful for the mom's and the families that clean my classroom at the end of every week and leave it smelling fresh and clean. Preparation is really important. It's an essential part, but preparation isn't everything. In our case, when we mix, our, when we uh, poured concrete, we had to mix our own cement. And that was an important part of the process as well, getting the proportions right getting the cement mixed thoroughly, not too wet, nor too dry, 
the cement mixture needs to be dry enough to stay strong when it's finished and wet enough to allow you to smooth it out and finish it well. School isn't all about getting through the books. Never underestimate the importance of recess time. Recess is filled with opportunities for important teaching times since we teach patience, fairness. You can teach grace, problem solving. Often these things are taught the best when we're off the script, when we're dealing with the things that come up. When you do this, you're shaping the clay and setting the patterns for the future. We are preparing our students for life. We are actively involved in shaping their hearts and values of these small people whose lives will live for eternity. And story time after lunch or after recess time. Story time, I think, is an important part of school. There are so many good books to read and discussions to be had and lessons to be learned for life. There are students in my class who will never read the books I read to them themselves. And if they did read them, they wouldn't get half of the importance and significance. There is one more thing I need to mention when we talk about proportions and school, and that is devotions. I still remember some of the verses and some of the discussions we had when I was in grade five and six and seven and eight. That's where I started to form my own convictions that I still hold today. I'm thankful to my teachers that took the time to get out of the books and have a good class discussion about pertinent issues. We discussed a lot of current events and I didn't know then, but I understand now that that's where I get my love of history. It is important to get the proportions right. Cement allows you only a limited time to work it into place and get it smooth. Then you start the finishing process. And the finishing methods change throughout the drying process. And then the cement sets up into concrete and gets hard and it remains the way you tooled it for many, many years to come. Concrete easily lasts a lifetime and cannot be remolded. Once it's hard, once it's dry, there's nothing much you can do to change it. If you wanna make changes, you'll either need to grind it off, which will change the look of it, or you'll need to break it up with a sledgehammer and haul it away in chunks and start over with fresh concrete. I'll try to share another slide with you here. So preparation is important. Proportions are, are important. But I wanna to talk too about the work of the Holy Spirit. As teachers, we are working with moldable clay the moldable clay of our, stu our students' hearts, their emotions, and their lives. As we conduct our classes and teach math and history and science, we teach them values. We develop their loves and model Christ for them. We need the presence of the Holy Spirit to do that. It reminds me of a quote that I read recently by Teresa of Avila. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now on the earth, but yours.
Imagine Jesus playing on the playground at your school. Imagine him walking through the halls or greeting the children as they come through the door in the morning. What would it be like to have him in your classroom, grading books, answering questions, or maybe even more importantly, asking questions? He is there. You have felt him there, and the children see him in you. It is a tall order. Day after day, there are 10 or 15 or 20 pairs of eyes watching you, seeing through you, scrutinizing your attitudes, your motives, measuring your reactions. They are learning from your example, copying you in some way. And yet they all come at it from a slightly different perspective. They all see each different situation through a different lens. Each student is a different person, comes from a different family, has their own unique personality, their own unique spectrum of needs, their own unique strengths, and their own set of weaknesses. I love a story that I heard many years ago from one of our Guatemalan teachers. There was a mother who came to her son's teacher and she was quite distressed and asked for his help. Her son had a bad habit of putting way too much sugar in his coffee. It's not healthy for him and he seems to be getting worse and worse with time, not better, she lamented. I know my son admires you a lot and I thought maybe you could help him, talk to him or something. I've tried scolding him, I've tried punishing him, and I simply can't seem to get through to him. When I'm not looking, he sneaks more sugar and puts it into his coffee. And that's a, that concerns me even more, his dishonesty and his deception. The mother listened to, the teacher listened to the distraught mother and replied that he would think about it and give her an answer the next day. The next day, the teacher told the troubled mother that he would try to help her son. He would start working with him in three weeks. Three weeks later, true to his word, he kept the lad after school and talked with him. He told him about his mother's concern for him. He explained how unhealthy too much sugar can be and the importance of not only developing good habits, but training ourselves and developing the personal strength to break our bad habits. He and the boy developed a plan He and the boy developed a plan, uh, and in a few weeks, the boy had broken his bad habit. The mother came once again to visit the teacher, but this time she was elated. Thank you, thank you, she said. My son has broken his bad habit and has become more obedient and respectful too. I am so thankful you were willing to talk with him. But why did you have to wait three weeks to start? Well. The teacher replied, first I had to break my bad habit and stop putting too much sugar in my coffee. I would rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I would rather you walk with me than merely point the way. The eye is a more ready pupil than ever was the ear. Good advice is often confusing, but example, is always clear. We have a tremendous responsibility. Maybe you're feeling overwhelmed. Teaching, I believe, is finding the balance between overwhelmed and overconfident and learning to be okay with camping out there for the rest of your life. We need to be overwhelmed enough to cry out to the Lord for help and guidance and lean hard on the Holy Spirit for direction. We need to be confident enough in our incompetence that students feel secure in following our leadership and respect us as an authority. You may be wondering how you can possibly get it right all the time. Well, let me tell you, you can't. You can't get it right all the time. 
I think every experienced teacher and every parent has memories of a time that they wish they could go back and redo. And that is the wonderful thing. We don't have to do it perfectly to teach well. Some of the best teaching and the best learning this year will happen as we humbly and honestly work through our mistakes with our students. I like the example of the Apostle Paul. I think we can learn a valuable lesson from him. Paul, that great apostle and teacher, needed to learn this lesson too and deal with the weaknesses in his life. He made mistakes too. There was something he asked the Lord three times to have taken away from him. But the Lord simply replied, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul said, Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Did you ever wonder what that weakness was? Some think it was his poor eyesight. If it was poor eyesight, have you ever considered how that weakness in Paul was used by God to strengthen the early church and the kingdom for the future? Think about it. Because of his weakness and confinement, Paul couldn't do the work by himself. He needed others to help him. He needed to write letters to the churches. He needed to help. He needed help to write and deliver those letters. So, Young men lived with him to care for him and do the errands he couldn't do himself. I believe God used these difficult circumstances to prepare those young men to carry out the work when he was gone. Since he couldn't visit the churches and teach and preach, he wrote letters. His letters have been a blessing to the church down through the ages, and they still give direction and encouragement to us today. Whether we agree on the exact nature of Paul's thorn in the flesh is, is really not important. I think there's probably a good reason that we don't know exactly what it is or what it was. The lesson I think to be learned here is about accepting our weaknesses and giving it to God, who can then use it for his honor and to build his kingdom. I wonder if Paul's difficulty was described in general enough terms to apply to any difficulty we may face now. Whether the thorn we struggle with today is physical, emotional, or spiritual, we can know that God has a purpose and his grace is all sufficient. I think of a quote that I found recently, and I think the Apostle Paul could have written it. It says, I thank God for protecting me from what I thought I wanted and blessing me with what I need. I thank God for protecting me from what I thought I wanted and blessing me with what I needed. Zachariah was told, it's not by might, nor by power, but by God's spirit. He was asked to encourage the lead builder and the priest. He was to assure them that the Lord of hosts would supply the golden oil to fuel the work and keep the light burning. In your work, in your preparations for school, in your daily work, throughout the school year, it's not going to be by might, nor by power, but by his spirit.
Preparation is very important, so keep preparing. Thank you for joining us today. This is part of, of preparation. And there's a lot of other preparation that you need to do with your textbooks and your scope and sequence. Proportions and schedules are necessary. Use them to your advantage. Make them work for you. And finally, the Holy Spirit is such an important part of teaching. The Holy Spirit wants to do the heavy lifting for you. He wants to be part of every day. He wants to be part of every part of your every day. He wants to use even your weaknesses to show his strength and purpose. He wants to build his kingdom through you. In Zechariah's vision, he saw a golden candlestick with a bowl. He didn't understand what it was. And I'm not able to explain it all to you either. But I do know that because of Jesus, there is forgiveness. Because of Jesus, we can model grace. Because of Jesus, there is redemption. Even for that messy situation you got yourself into. His spirit fills and guides us. His spirit gives us opportunities to share his life and his love. His spirit gives us the right words to say along with those opportunities. And his spirit is with us every moment of every day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we recognize that the task that is before us is entirely too big for us, and yet you have called us to it. And Lord, we want to be faithful in answering that call. May we be your hands, may we be your feet, may we share your words and your life with those we love. May you help us to love even the unlovely. Give us special grace now and help us to extend grace to others. We pray through Christ, your son. Amen. Thank you, Stephen. This is very inspiring and encouraging. I'll just say if, uh, if any of you have a, a question that you'd like to, to offer here or a question for Stephen to consider responding to, you can type it into the um, chat box and we'll, um, we'll, we'll allow Stephen a chance to respond to that. Um, but I'm especially encouraged here, Stephen, with the, the reality that the Holy Spirit is the one, I, I like your words there, He's the, he's the one, he wants to do the heavy lifting for us. And probably each one of us can, can could think of some situations that uh, look heavy, that, that are heavy and difficult. And it can be easy to, for me at least, to be overwhelmed by those and to think, try to strategize how I can, how I can work on this issue um, and to forget that it is not dependent on my ability. Um, the Holy Spirit wants to use me, but he is, he's the one who's capable and I need to depend on his, um, on his power and leading. Um, thank you for the inspiration. I'm inspired again in thinking about the significance of, of the shaping and the, the long-term impact that teachers have uh, on children and young people. Um, so I look forward to, to hearing what you'll bring to us tomorrow, what, what the Lord will bring to us through you. Um, and we'll, we'll rejoin here tomorrow at the same time. Uh, Lucas, is there anything else that needs to be said here at the end of today's session? Recording should be available on the doc. Actually, I think available now as a YouTube video. Um, and maybe just a sneak preview, we are working to line up additional sessions such as these throughout the month of August. Um, details forthcoming on that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's
That's all I have. Thank you. And so thank you all for joining us today. It's, um, we hope this is a blessing to you. Thank you for um, joining us. And we, we are praying for you as you prepare for the next school year. We're praying that God will give you wisdom and insight and strength as you plan and prepare. And, and we pray that this year will be a, a good year, a year that contributes to growth and, and development for children and young people all over the country and all over the world. Thanks again for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for setting it all up. And uh, I, I guess people are welcome to bring their friends tomorrow as well. Yes. Bring your friends. Um, forward this information to anyone you think may be interested. And recordings will be available. Okay. Could I just end there? Maybe on that note, uh, Stephen, do you want to give us a three-second teaser about tomorrow? <laughs> Well, you know, maybe that's where the Holy Spirit comes in, because I'm still trusting on that one. I, I may share a little bit of my journey this past year. It, it felt uphill the whole way. And yet I, I would just want to testify that, that God is so faithful. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't give us the grace we need for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He gives us the grace we need for today. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can take that to the bank. You can plan on that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll look forward to tomorrow. Okay. Thanks again, 